Welcome back. We're looking at some strange trigonometric functions. I mean, people are used to do sine, cos, and tan. Or at least should be by now after we've done some videos. But you might also occasionally see the idea of cosecant x, secant x, and cotangent x, or whatever variable you might choose to use. But these are weird. They look weird anyway, and you're probably not going to see them on your calculator. So it's not just, oh, get rid of cot by doing cot to the minus 1. No, what do I do? Well, these are related to the functions we know. Cosecant, it's actually kind of the opposite of what you expect. Cosecant is related to sine. Secant is related to cosine. And cotangent is related to tan. So what, how is that related? Well, let's say I have cosecant of x. I can put brackets if I want, like always. Well, this is the exact same thing as saying 1 over sine x. And that's really what you do. So, I mean, by that stretch, I can also say 1 over cosecant x is equal to sine x. And really, this is what you need to know about these functions. This right here, I mean, we'll look at the others in a second, but you don't worry about cosecant x. You don't use it. You convert it to sine x. And then, hey, sine x, we're used to that. We know what to do. We know how to solve those. So this is the big trick. Secant, when we're using that, secant x is the same as 1 over cosine x. Which means 1 over secant x is equal to cos x, just like this. And we can also say cotangent x. You're going to notice there's a kind of theme to this, cotangent x. That's the same as 1 over tan x. Which, since, I mean, we think tan x is sine over cos, we could also think this is the same as saying cos x over sine x. The exact opposite, the flipped of the tan x. So, you don't work with cosecant, you don't work with secant, you don't work with cotangent, you just convert it into one of the ones that we know and we're used to and that we have on our calculator and can calculate from. So we'll look at an example of that in a second. 